Hey, this is Max. I'm back with another CSR2 video. Today it's the Vorsteiner R8 VRS. This is a previous milestone car. I'm going to show you some stage 5 only tunes for this car. Uh, first, let's take a look. Make sure it's stage 5 only. Now, let's take a look at something first. I want to show you the shift pattern uh, on this car's transmission. Now, you want to make sure you have this kind of a funky shift pattern showing on your Warsteiner in order to follow the tips I'm going to give in this video. Because if you have the other shift pattern, which is an evenly spaced lines shift pattern that appears on some people's cars, it will tune completely differently. And since I don't have that shift pattern, I can't show you a tune based on that. So make sure you have this uneven tune uh, or uneven pattern in order for you to follow uh, what I'm doing with my tunes. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're not going to be able to get the same effects. Okay, so now let's talk about actually stage 5 tuning for this car. Uh, this is a good car. It does well in live. And that's because I can down tune it, depending upon how I set it up, um, into slightly faster uh, dynos. Now, I have it right now set at 9.779. This is not optimal. It could be 9.754, uh, which is a little bit faster if you just tweak it a little bit and adjust the grip to 7. It'll actually go up and you, there's your 9.754. However, I find it very hard to hit 9.754 with this car. Uh, in fact, I find it hard to hit dyno in general. Here we're going to test run it real quick, and I'll show you what's the best I can normally get out of it. you got to be careful with this car. It likes to do zero RPM drops. So even when launching perfect, it has to be like slightly late on perfect, or it could still give you that zero RPM drop. So here I did a, as best it runs I can. And we got a 9.826. So it's a little bit slower than Dino, which is 9.754. A uh, fast accelerating car, but not the most impressive when it comes to hitting dyno with the stock Max Evo tune. All right, so now that I know the Max Evo tune is a bit of a struggle for me, what, what can I do? Well, what you can do with this car to make it work better, in a sense, is to tweak where the final gear is for reaching the top uh, possible speed, which is around 295, 290, 295. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move seventh gear away. And I'm going to put fifth gear kind of in the place where seventh gear was using before. So you're kind of lowering it so that the top of fifth is actually higher than 290, putting it about halfway there to hit 290 in fifth. I can also raise the acceleration a little bit to make the car run a little better on the top since you're running a lower final drive. That's a 10.136. Uh, not the best, not the worst, but it, it can be adjusted more. However, let's take a run right now at that dyno and see what it gives us. All right, so here I'm going to run it with the 10.136 dyno, again, launching late this time, second, third, nitrous, and fourth, running it out in fifth because that's where the car is going to top out. And a 10.015. So now you're 0 0.136 to 0 0.015, a 0 0.1 drop which is more competitive than running over dyno, but not necessarily super competitive in live. So what do I want to do is lower it some more. This time I'm actually going to put fourth gear to where the 290 to 300 miles per hour is. Now you're looking at a 2.494, 4.95. But can you still run that 10.0? We're about to find out. All right, so here, again, launching slightly late. You don't want to launch dead on. You're going to get a zero RPM drop. 7,000 is okay. 
don't want a red line either. So I actually hit nitrous a little bit earlier that time, but it shouldn't make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things because I'm topping out in fourth gear. And it's a 10.020, so 10.015 versus a 10.020, but understand our dyno is now a 10.495, so now you're beating dyno by about four and a, four and seven tenths, which is quite a bit, right? Almost uh, half, a, half a second here now. Now, you can also put it anywhere in between, so you can do the 10.253, and we'll run it based on that to see where we are at after we run the car. So you, you have some flexibility here. You can go 10.1, 10.2, 10.4. Bottom line is once you have the basic settings set up, all these just by slightly adjusting the dyno and maintaining the ability to run the time that you had originally makes the car quite competitive. Ten point oh three four. So the, the margin of error there is almost all in my shifting and nitrous use. Uh, so 10.1, 10.2, 10.4, they all end up in the same place in the sense that you get 10.0s for what you can actually run. Okay, so all these different locations work, right? So you have a very flexible car that can dyno all over the place. So let's take this 10.48 dyno and let's go to live and see what it does. Okay, let's head out to the live lobby and give this car a test run. Hmm. Now, I'm, um, this one's only have limited people. Let me jump out and in back in. It should bump me to a full lobby rather than tail end or top end of a lobby somewhere. There we go. Full lobby. Okay. So now let's find somebody to race. Uh, let's try Tyrone. James Lynch. I see that little arrow. That means he could accept if he wants to. He did. And that is a Continental GT Speed. Now, GT Speeds are very hard to get to be dyno with. So whatever he runs is probably the dyno bracket I'm in. So let's take a look at how we're doing. Again, I'm going to launch late enough that hopefully I won't bog the car. Here we go. Fourth gear nitrous. Yes, he's way ahead, but that's the way the Continental GT Speed works. And I pull past him later half the track to take the win. 10.259 on the 10.48 dyno. He ran a 10.421, which is actually pretty much straight on in the bracket where I think the car or the bracket is, so that's perfect. So his car's dialed in on that bracket. Whether he's running under dyno, it's a, uh, not something I can figure out just looking at the numbers. All right, so let's find another person to race because we want to show that there's some consistency with this. And it's not a fluke that I race someone who I happen to be able to beat real easily. Hmm. All right. Got plenty of racers. The question is who's going to want to race me? Let's try, let's try the pink S2K. Oh, that's not looking good. I don't think he's going to accept. Yeah, once it's down to 12 seconds or so, it'll probably just says you refused. Race refused. Now, that could be a re race refused by the person. It could be just a race refused because he couldn't accept. I, I don't presume. I don't care. Okay, if I don't get a race, it doesn't hurt my feelings. Plenty of other people in the lobby. Move on. Race someone else. Stressing about what other people did or didn't do or what their intents are behind, it just makes you more upset when you play the game. So I try not to do that. All right, so here's a TSG1. Now, this car I know can beat Dino as well. Although my, ooh, zero RPM. I don't know what happened there. I saw a pause at one when I hit my launch button. I got a zero RPM drop. That means I'm only going to run Dino or so. And therefore, I am kind of screwed. And I am. I lose. 
But notice he ran a 10.424, knowing that my car could run 10.2s. I'm going to read challenging him again just to prove a point. And he could probably run faster than that time as well. I think um, definitely uh, TS TSG1 can run faster than whatever it dynos. I just don't have, I mean, TS1 GT, sorry. I just don't have enough parts right now to get deep into this car. So a little free tip, you know, for the Audis, you can get all your fusions from stripping Audi TTRS from the dealership. 75K a pop, delivers quick, strip it for four or five fusions a shot, well worth doing. Uh, for, you know, a million, you're, you're actually stripping like 10, 20, 15 cars. I mean, that's a lot of fusions. Uh, so that time I got it, he's re-challenging. I'm going to race him again, but... It, Obviously, I'll just give this to him because I have to leave afterwards. I don't want to um, start what looks like a trade session and just kind of bail. But at the same time, I, I'm not going to just uh, beat him twice in a row. I need to actually set the lobby as slow as possible. So losing in the beginning when you first jump into a lobby is not a bad thing. You, you want to lose a little bit, uh, kind of keep an average time around lobby time so you don't get bumped too easily. Okay. so. 10.302, I mean 304, I was going to re-challenge him to see if he can do better, but he left, so that's that. Anyway, that kind of proves my point that, yes, you can be in the 10.4 lobby, but there will be people that will run faster and there will be people that will run slower, right? And the advantage of you having a Tier 5 car in this lobby is that the Tier 4 cars cannot run under... Much, well, not without some world record tune anyway. It can't run under 10. So you're kind of the top dog against the tier fours in this lobby. Challenging any of them, you should be able to win. I mean, it's just because your car's running like a 10.015 at its best. And these guys, even if they're slightly down tuned, should only be a, around a 10.2 or so. So it won't be a 10.5, I mean, 9.9 situation coming up against you. So your chances of winning is very good. All right. So... You kind of notice that at 10.481, we can do pretty well. Uh, but of course, that's a bit of a large number gap on a down two, and you want you don't want to risk it too much. Uh, personally, I would tweak it a little bit. Maybe run it around 10.3, doing 10.0. That's actually a pretty safe place to be. And a lot of these adjustments, nothing more than tweaking the final drive and the tire okay so 9.877 it's easy to reach if you put the numbers up a little bit but again i'm not interested in doing that i'm more interested in knowing i am going to be able to beat dino and therefore have good chances in live racing all right so Back to live again. Let's take a look. Notice, once I move the dyno to 10.3, my lobby completely changed. That means 10.4 and 10.3 really isn't the same lobby. So 10.39 or 3.5 may put you in the slower lobby or may put you in the 10.3 lobby. And the 10.4 second one is definitely its own lobby. Uh, ten, probably 10.39 to 10.69 or something like that. All right. So that kind of concludes my quick stage five discussion. Okay. Again, stage five only, no stage six. So what do you do with this car? Do you like it? Do you have success with it? I'm curious. Let me know. Feel free to comment in the comments. Um, note that the RA V10 and the Vorsteiner is very similar in the way they operate, depending on which shift pattern you have. So you can down tune either one using almost similar strategies as I show you on the Vorsteiner. I hope you liked the video. Please uh, comment. Let me know. And... Uh, 
subscribe to the channel so you can get notifications when I put up new videos. I do appreciate everyone who subscribes to my channel, watches my videos, and posts comments. Uh, it's more fun for me when I play the game, when in the back of my mind I can think, oh yeah, well this guy mentioned this, that guy mentioned that. It's something for me to do uh, a video on and look forward to when I was playing the game to test things out. So I do appreciate that. I enjoy playing the game. I enjoy interacting with my viewers. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I'll catch you next time.